In this video, we talk about factor anomalies. The anomalies literature is the scientific foundation for the quantitative asset management industry. Since the mid-1990s, factor-based ETFs have gained tremendous popularity. By mid-2016, these funds managed approximately 1.35 trillion US dollars in the US market accounting for roughly 10% of the market capitalization of traded securities. So what are anomalies? Are they robust or the result of p-hacking, data mining and overfitting? So return anomalies are return patterns that appear to pay excess returns that are above the fair rate for the respective amount of systematic risk. So these are alphas. Popular anomalies are momentum, value versus growth, investment, profitability, intangibles, and several trading frictions. Now, momentum says that past winners tend to overperform past losers. Value versus growth says that firms that appear cheap relative to fundamentals tend to outperform firms with high priced and growth expectations. Investment related anomalies say that firms with past low investments, which importantly are firms with high expected investments, tend to overperform firms with high past investments or low expected investments. Now profitability says that profitable firms tend to overperform less profitable firms. Intangibles, now that says that differences in the stock's liquidity, R&D, earnings dispersion, etc. cause abnormal returns. And trading frictions summarize findings that firms with differing total, systematic or idiosyncratic volatility, skewness, etc or beta, or betting against beta, downside risk, tail risk, that such firms pay different returns. Now the 2018 RFS publication of Hu, Xu and Zhang with the title Replicating Animalies replicate 447 published return animalies from the finance and accounting literature. So think about it, there are 447 alpha generating strategies. Now, maybe surprisingly, maybe not, but the fact is the authors find that 85% of these anomalies cannot be replicated. To be precise, they cannot be replicated when requiring a t-statistic of larger than 3, when relying on portfolio sorts that go long the top decile portfolio and shorts the bottom decile portfolio. When computing value weighted returns of the decile portfolio instead of equal weight returns. And when controlling for macro cap stocks that have an, in total a market value of less than 3% but account for more than 60% of all stocks. Now these authors find that 161 out of the 447 return anomalies can be confirmed. But only 46 of these 161 are alpha relative to the author's favorite factor model, which they call the Q factor model of asset returns. So if you think about the 46 versus the 447, you basically end up with 10 alpha, 10% 10 alpha returns. Now, instead of stating which of the 447 factor anomalies appear to be not existent, I state the ones that survive the bar of Hu, Xu, and Zhang. Now, these are earnings announcements, operating and discretionary accruals, cash based operating profits to assets, research and development to market, and seasonality abnormalities, as in Heston Satga 2008. Yet the authors state that even these alphas are often far lower than what the original study found. Now what shall we take away from that factor zoo, which seems to have more fake than real animals? Now here's my personal opinion. 
I treat all anomalies as a data artifact. I rather over reject than being fooled by p-hacking data mining and data noise. Second, competitive markets pay hopefully a premium for systematic risk. Hence that is captured by beta. So in addition, why should simple long short strategies earn alpha? Significant amounts of cash jump onto the bandwagon and make any existing alpha disappear. And that is what we should anticipate to happen. Third, the following thought is really painful for researchers. Incentive-wise, there seems to be an incentive for p-hacking, data mining, etc. Just to think about well-paid consulting jobs and tenure offers from prestigious universities. Now, a discussion of these incentive misalignments can be found in that paper by Hu, Xu, and Zhang. And finally, factor investing in the sense of going long, short stocks based on some empirical characteristics is, in my view, nothing that I would use for building a pension portfolio.